this is the second tutorial on the in-game level editor plugin uh in the last video i showed how to set up your project just go through uh, a very basic setup make sure everything's working make sure all the inputs are connected in this tutorial i will show you how to use the plugins property system which is uh, a very integral part of the plugin it allows you to do some really nice stuff like storing data per placeable actor and even having custom ui that you can edit the values with so what i have here is the example project which is available for download uh, from the docs page or the store page okay i will start by uh, making an example level just to show everything. This is what the example project comes with. Uh, it comes with uh, four placeables. Uh, these are the ones we care about. So uh, this door button placeable here uh, has a property called target door. Uh, and this is the custom UI, which uh, you can of course make yourself. Uh, that allows uh, users to edit whatever value is underlying here. So for example, target door uh, is configured to uh, show any placeables in the level that inherit from this uh, door class. So here we only have one option available. Let's click that. Uh, and once the reference is set, uh, the button and the door will change into the same color. And that will also be stored in something called a hidden property, which is just uh, a property with no UI. So it doesn't get shown here, but uh, there's a hidden property which stores uh, the color. Uh, of the button and the door. So now that these two are linked, uh, we can try saving the level and playing it and see what happens. So if I push on this button, so let me jump, the target door will disappear. That's what they're wired to do. And this is uh, only possible through the reference property, which saves a reference to the door as custom data and loads it uh, with the level. Uh, that property is a bit advanced, I'd say. So in this tutorial, I'll make probably like the simplest property value you could store. Uh, I'll make a, a Boolean property that will dictate whether something is hidden or not. So let's start. I'll copy this example cube blueprint. I'll just call this uh, hidden cube. Uh, let's go inside. I'll just rename uh, the placeable. So this one's called cube. Let's call this hidden cube. Uh, so inside this Agile interface component, there's a field called properties, which is an array. Let's try adding one. Uh, inside you get the choice for name, category, options. Now, this is used to pass in custom options, which you can access from anywhere for the property. Finally, this is the class, which will dictate uh, two things. It will dictate the, any data you want to store. So here you would put in uh, your custom property class. I will show how this is done later. Uh, and inside the property class, you can also specify a widget that will be drawn to let the user edit the value. So let's leave this blank for now. Okay, let's just test if this hidden cube actually shows up in the editor. It does, there it is. It's uh, For now, it's just the same as this cube. It's just a different class. So let's add our custom property. Uh, first thing you need to do is make uh, an object that derives from Eichel, uh property value object underscore base. Uh, let's call this uh, BP example bool property. In here, this is gonna be very simple. Uh, there are two things that we need to do. One is uh, set the value widget class, which is what's gonna be drawn uh, to let the user edit the value. This will be just a very simple widget. We'll probably just do a, a checkbox. Uh, and the other thing is uh, you wanna actually put what kind of data you wanna store. So. This is done by just adding a variable. Whatever variables you have here, these will be like saved and you can access them whenever you have access to the property. This works like a, just like an object, just like an intermediate object. So let's call this value and just leave it as a boolean. That's all we need. Uh, let's make a user widget. This has to inherit uh, from I go property value widget base. All this has is a reference to the actual property object. That, that's not too important. Uh, let's call this... Uh, W underscore example pool property. Here I'm just going to drag in a checkbox. That's all we need to edit the Boolean value. Inside the graph here, we have access to uh, one value just called property, which is a reference to uh, the property object. Uh, and basically, all we need to do is uh, modify it. So let's grab the checkbox. Let's uh, add an event on check state changed. Uh, we also need to load the actual state of the checkbox. Uh, this we will do right here. So you grab this object, 
uh, this will be an object uh, of your type. So for example, we have this example, uh, example rule property. Uh, let's drag this out and try to cast it. Cast to example rule property. There it is. From here, we can access our value variable, just like that. Uh, and then drag out the checkbox and set is checked to the value. This will load in the state into the checkbox. And then when uh, when the actual state is changed, so when the user presses the checkbox to like check it or uncheck it, uh, we should save the value and also need to do another thing. So first things first, let's cast to example blue property and set value, not set property, set value to the check state, pretty simple. Uh, the other thing we need to do is call a node called try call a property value changed. Uh, this will call uh, a callback from within, uh, let me find this guy. So for example, inside the uh, hidden cube, uh, whenever we call this, this will basically try to call this event right here called on property value changed inside the icon interface. So here, this will just uh, call whatever property was changed uh, and give us the name. So we can access it. So for example, we can do something like this, get property by name or property by, actually get property value by name, uh, drag in this. and do whatever we need with this value now. Uh, so that should be it. Uh, so let's go into hidden cube and now we can actually add our custom property class as one of the properties here. So let's call this uh, is hidden. Uh, options could be right clear, don't need anything there. And drag in this example bool property class. This should hopefully work. Ah, we forgot one thing. Um, inside the, the actual property, we need to set our custom widget. So what was this called again? This. Now our widget is set, everything should work. Let's try it out. Let's drag out the hidden cube and yes, our property is right there. It's called is hidden. We can check it, uncheck it. And if we check it, save the level, save and quit, press edit again, everything is saved. It's still checked. So our custom property is working. Now let's make it uh, actually do its job. So. Uh, back to example, uh, back to hidden cube. Uh, we won't do this. Uh, we will first check if the property name is what we need to be. That's not the one. So check if the change property is called is hidden. Uh, this event will also be called when the level is loaded. So you don't have to like have a begin play here and just like make it do the same thing. That's, that's fine. You could just use this. So. If the property that changed is called as hidden, which is our property right here, uh, we can get the property by uh, the name and drag out this value. Do the same thing, cast to example the property. Grab the value out here and uh, pretty simple thing, just set hidden. Set hidden game to this value, that's it. And now this should work. Because uh, we had our hidden set to true, we should not see the cube right now. Yep, it's gone. The only way to access it is here. Well, I'm pretty sure you can still click it. Yeah, it still has collision, but we can't see it. And everything works. If we press this hidden, it's gone. Uh, unhidden, it works. So that's our basic, basic property setup. You can always do like more advanced things with this. Like there, there is no limit. Uh, this is one of the more advanced properties. This has like proper proper UI. And it even uses the option string and everything. Again, everything is, uh, all this stuff is in blueprints. So you can check how everything works. You can look at the examples. Um, I'm sure you'll be fine with this. It's not too overtly complicated. Uh, but yeah, I think that's that's it for the tutorial. Of course, uh, everything still works when we play. The cube is still hidden, but there is collision. I can't walk through here. So yeah, that's, that's basically it.